India and China have been civilizational friends. The proof of our friendship has been excavated by archaeologists as well. Even during Indus Valley civilization, India and China used to do transactions. Naturally, we would be assisting them in the 21st century as well. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host, Tejasvi Malhotra. And if you haven't subscribed to the TFI English channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. Coming back to the story in this video, I'm here to tell you how the bond between India and China is flourishing in the 21st century. Let's begin. In terms of geography and other aspects such as economy, military, among others, getting China on our side makes much more sense. The land of Confucius is currently the second largest economy in the world and we can derive much more gains by developing a bonhomy with them. One of the methods to develop friendship is making their job easier in whatever they do. India did just that. According to various reports available in the public domain, Jammu and Kashmir is not the only place which will hold few meetings of the G20. Now, Ladakh has also joined the bandwagon. In fact, the orders have been transferred to the local authorities and they are gearing up. The nodal officer for supervising the overall arrangement of the meeting will be Sogal Biswas, Commissioner, Secretary, Industries and Commerce Department and Divisional Commissioner of Ladakh. The coordination for security arrangements will be taken care of by Sheikh Junaid Mahmood, Deputy Inspector General of Lake Kargil Range. The official communication read, The nodal officers shall, on behalf of the administration of UT of Ladakh, ensure a logistical arrangements required at various stage of hosting the meetings as requested by the G20 Secretariat wide abid communication. Do you know Ladakh was not a part of the initial itinerary of the G20? Earlier, only Jammu and Kashmir was scheduled to hold few meetings. But apparently, one of our neighbours was not happy with it. Pakistan strongly opposed to the move and asked China, Turkey and few other countries to boycott the move. Now, no matter how much Pakistanis are emotive about the issue, India doesn't care. You want to know why? Because India only cares about the countries having at least a thousand year bond with it. Pakistan does not qualify for that cutoff number. Come on, this barely 74 years old. And when you look at it from evolutionary time scale, it is still in its nappies. China qualifies the list of countries whose contention can be taken seriously by India. That is why when China came forward with its concern that it may have problems in attending the Kashmir part of the meetings, India did listen. China was looking for a reason to not attend G20 meetings. We are not saying it. Read its foreign ministry spokesperson Zaho's statements. The Modi cabinet took the mission on a war footing. They brainstormed to find out any such immediate reason to make China's job easier. But these intelligent ministers and bureaucrats have become experts in it. From last three years, they have been doing the same, albeit in their areas of interests. For one, China wanted to have a strictly defined line of actual control. India made its job easier by sticking to its demarcated region in the Galwan Valley. True, some Chinese soldiers lost their lives, but it's nothing compared to the number of dead Uyghur Muslims. A communist regime can easily soak up that much amount of blood of its own people. Similarly, China wanted a fixed buy of India's consumer market. India obliged and threw away Chinese apps and even companies from the market. In short, India has fixed the percentage of share which China can occupy in Indian market. In the near future, the share of Chinese products will be zero. So, you see how much expertise Modi cabinet holds in assisting China. It just found a piece of land contested by China and arranged for meeting in Ladakh. It was never a big deal for India to hold the meeting there. But it made it a lot easier for China to boycott a group housing 80% of the world's GDP and 66% of the world's population. We hope China returns India's friendship gesture with equal cordialness.